Good morning, boys and girls. Today, the first story I'm going to read is The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch, and the artwork is done by Michael Marchenko. Elizabeth was a beautiful princess. She lived in a castle and had very expensive princess clothes. She was going to marry a prince named Ronald. Unfortunately, a dragon smashed her castle, burned all of her clothes with his fiery breath, and carried off Prince Ronald. Elizabeth decided to chase the dragon and get Ronald back. She looked everywhere for something to wear, but the only thing she could find that was not burnt was a paper bag. So she put on the paper bag and followed the dragon. He was easy to follow because he had left a trail of burnt forest and horse's bones. Finally, Elizabeth came to a cage with a large door that had a huge knocker on it. She took hold of the knocker and banged on the door. The dragon stuck his nose out the door and said, Well, a princess. I love to eat princesses, but I have already eaten a whole castle today. I am a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. He slammed the door so fast that Elizabeth almost got her nose caught. Elizabeth grabbed the knocker and banged on the door again. The dragon stuck his nose out the door and said, go away. I love to eat princesses, but because I have already eaten a whole castle today, I'm not hungry. I'm a very busy dragon. Come back tomorrow. Wait, shouted Elizabeth. Is it true that you are the smartest and fiercest dragon in the whole world? Yes, said the dragon. Is it true that you can burn up 10 forests with your fiery breath? Oh yes, said the dragon. And he took a huge deep breath and breathed out so much fire that he burnt up 50 forests. Fantastic, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath and breathed out so much fire that he burnt up 100 forests. Magnificent, said Elizabeth. And the dragon took another huge breath, but this time nothing came out. The dragon didn't even have enough fire left to cook a meatball. Elizabeth said, dragon, is it true that you can fly around the world in just 10 seconds? Why, yes, said the dragon and jumped up and flew all the way around the world in just 10 seconds. He was very tired when he got back, but Elizabeth shouted, fantastic, do it again. So the dragon jumped up and flew around the world in just 20 seconds. When he got back, he was too tired to talk and he lay down and went straight to sleep. Elizabeth, Elizabeth whispered very softly, hey dragon, the dragon didn't move at all. She lifted up the dragon's ear and put her head right inside. She, she shouted as loud as she could, Hey, dragon! The dragon was so tired, he didn't even move. Elizabeth walked right over the dragon and opened the door to the cave. There was Prince Ronald. He looked at her and said, Elizabeth, you are a mess. You smell like ashes, your hair is all tangled, and you are wearing a dirty old paper bag. Come back when you are dressed like a real princess. Ronald, said Elizabeth, your clothes are really pretty and your hair is very neat. You look like a real prince, but you are a bum. They didn't get married after all. The end. So it doesn't really matter what you're wearing, right? What matters is what you do and how hard you work and how smart you are. Okay, this one is by Helen Lester and it's called Score One for the Sloths and it was illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Look at all the sloths hanging on the rope. Hody hum, it was another day at Sleepy Valley Sloth School and all the sloths were just hanging around. Once in a while, a teacher would remember his job and wake up with a lesson. All right now, he would draw everybody yawn or keep those snores coming or all together, students, let's roll over. Most of the time, though, this class just slept. It was a sloth thing. They were content in their slothfulness. Occasionally, the principal would drop in and say with a chortle, I don't mean to wake you, but I've never in my life seen such a lazy bunch of louts. Keep up the good whatever, and the sloths would smile in their slumber. The only movement of the day came at lunch hour. Actually, it was lunch three hours, when the sloths would amble around the slothateria, taking a berry at a time, slowly chewing each one, 
ever so carefully. After all that exertion, it was nap time again, and then the students were off to study hall. Not study very much either. And then it was time for recess. The dismissal bang bell rang at three o'clock sharp every day, but it was dusk before the sloths left school because no one wanted to get up to open the door. Do I have to? moaned one. I did it last time, yawned another. My leg hurts, mumbled a third. So everybody was happy to go back to sleep until six o'clock when the custodian came and swept them out and they rolled home. One day, a new sloth came to school. She had just moved to the area and her name was Sparky. Sparky was perky. She was full of life and energy and vim and vigor and vitality. She was a mover and a shaker and a go-getter. And by mid-morning, she was driving the other sloths crazy. Let's read a story. Hey, we could use a little music, she said. Want to build a castle? Anyone for some poetry? Anyone for some math? The lazy sloths shook Sparky off, nudged her with their elbows, and shoved her away with their toes. Here she goes. So poor Sparky sat in the corner, fidgeting on her first day of school, feeling very unwelcome. What a bunch of bores, she sighed to herself. Then she looked up, and there was a real boar at the door with a clipboard. From its outfit, it was clear that it was a real wild boar. The boar announced, I am an official representative of SOS. That's the Society for Organizing Sameness. Wait till you hear what we know about you. It says here in my report that Sleepy Valley Sloth School is a disgrace to the entire mammal district. Oh dear. The boar was getting wound up now and began pacing wildly, shaking trees, whacking some sloths with the clipboard and poking others with a pencil until everyone was awake. Want to know your scores? Without waiting for an answer, the wild boar boomed on. Reading, dreadful. Music, the absolute worst. Block building, zilcho. Math, forget it. Poetry, off, below, and way under the chart. Thus, I am here from the SOS to close this school. The sloths gasped. Their school, their happy, peaceful, slothful school. They had to do something, but they weren't doers. They had never done anything. Only one sloth could help them now. The mover, the shaker, the go-getter. All eyes turned with hope to Sparky. Sparky addressed the wild boar. You mentioned reading. Reading, of course. And she passed out books and the sloths, being unsure of what books were, sandwiches, began munching. Reading, whispered Sparky, not eating. She laid a book over each sloth. The sloths looked like they were reading. Music? Sparky whipped her violin out of her knapsack and played The Flight of the Bumblebee, while the other sloths snored. Zzzz. It was very realistic. Block building. The sloths were well past their nap time, but they threw themselves into the task. Occasionally, a sloth in need of a quick snooze would get, a sand would get sandwiched, but that made the tower all that much higher. See, it was in there. By now, the sloths were thoroughly exhausted. Sparky pressed on. Math, what's two plus two? The answer came in a groan. Forget it. Luckily, the wild boar only heard the four and not the get it, so he didn't get it. And the last subject you mentioned, said Sparky, was poetry. Off, you said, below, and way under the chart. If you please, we will recite The Way of the Sloth. Of course, all sloths everywhere had been brought up with this poem. They'd known it since they were babies. They could recite it in their sleep. And so they did. See, they're all sleeping. The way of the sloth. The way of the sloth is gentle and kind. It hangs from the tree with nothing in mind. It doesn't make faces or throw fits or holler. It never gets heated under the collar. It's surely no bother, that's easy to see. It just hangs around, contented to be. That, stated the wild boar, was impressive, most impressive. Some nitwit must have confused your school with another. Sleepy Valley Sloth School is a credit to the entire mammal district. Off stalked the wild boar with his clipboard, and everyone, especially Sparky, settled in for a peaceful, well-deserved, and very long nap. The end. Thanks again for listening, boys and girls, and watching, and I'll be back tomorrow.
Have a good day.